let's put the the art in such a way you all are very creative um i'm i'm very happy uh for those of you who are in, in the workshop or you're posting up your art uh just a lot of a lot of this really good content i'm, I'm so happy to be a part of it um that in that you're sharing it with me because that goes on you know if, roadie if you say that i inspire you bear in mind that it, it's a very reciprocal relationship you all inspire me as well uh you all energize me you all help me address whatever kind of content we're looking to create Yeah, Rody, if you want some advice on writing, you know that you're welcome to tap our mentors for that. Okay, bro applier. And we'll see how long this stream goes tonight. I'm going on about four hours of sleep. Speaking of sharing energy, I mean, if I can stay up and, and do a full stream, I will. But just as a heads up, I, I did want to, to go live and make sure that we're, we're making uh, content and that we're brainstorming. Um... But I also want to make sure that I'm presenting in a good fashion to you all. And that I am, I am being high energy uh, and that, you know, the creativity is flowing. Um, so, I mean, I have this fruit punch with me. It's, there's no sugar because, again, why fill up on sugar in, in a drink when you can put that towards, like, eating a cookie? I mean, come on. Let, let, let's be real. <laughs> but I had some dinner. I have a drink. I have you all here engaging in conversation and having a ton of fun. So we can delve into it. Oh, you know what? I did need to bring up our Discord. Um, just to shore up our from our last session, uh, or from last night, when we were discussing NPCs before my internet died, well, it was going through maintenance. And of course, I got the notification after the maintenance had already passed, right? Because I could click on a, a link and then the ISP uh, sort of inserts a um, uh, like a, a window or something before you click through to the website saying, hey, we're going to do some maintenance. Well, that's great. I can get that message after my internet returns after the maintenance. Come on now. Anyway, so yeah, if you're wondering what happened last night, internet. <laughs> and so I had to call it and uh, well, the rest is history, right? Anyway, so here was the prompt for the NPC as I randomly had rolled it. And you know what? If any of you still want to uh, make a concept for this character, you're welcome to do so. And in fact, uh, both Derek um, both Derek and Bobacus hopped on the opportunity. Um, when you look at the DMG, what those numbers translated to is an NPC. And, and the challenge here was I was just going to throw out some random prompts there doesn't have to be an association to the characters. And now what is, um, who is this character? Make a character that exists and is relevant in the world based on random prompts instead of being hooked in with a, a PC or two. So for occupation and history, I rolled on the backgrounds table in the PHB. We got a guild artisan or a merchant, specifically a wagon maker, or a wheelwright. Um, 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 he's missing fingers. High strength, low con. Talent speaks several languages fluently. Mannerism makes constant jokes or puns. Interaction with others was irritable. I didn't know the useful knowledge because that's that's kind of a, a, a fleshing out bit. Ideal, it's a good ideal, that of respect. His bond, he's out for revenge. Hmm. And his flaw or secret is his arrogance. And with that, then, uh, we had two pitches uh, by Bobacus and by Derek. Um, now, you can hop on here and read them for yourself. Um, both of them were really good. In fact, they even shared some elements which uh, could provide a heavy influence in how, uh, how we should eventually manifest this NPC as we're going to tell the tale of this campaign.
And Nadpo, if you're watching, um, unfortunately, I'm I'm not too I'm not too hip to the macro lingo for roll twenty. Um, I wish I could give you some advice there, Nadpo, but unfortunately, uh, it is it is not in my my current skill set. <clears throat> However, at roll twenty guide. There we go. If you want help in the, if you ever want help in uh, in our workshop, uh, you can tag mentors by uh, they, they they all have different tags here, right? Streaming guide, streaming guide, RP mentor, roll twenty guide, um, RP mentor, uh, coffee cat has volunteered to be an art advisor if you have questions on um, artistic things. Um, and you know he's not the only one. Uh, there are, are many others who share, are willing to share their talents. If you wanted to, um, if you wanted to get advice on something. All right. So we we had that as an NPC. I thought it was really cool. Um, I'll urge you. Hey, hop in, uh, hop on our Discord and take a look. And if you want to still pitch an idea using those prompts as an NPC, please do so. Have some fun with it. It's it, a challenge back to you, not just a solve in front of you on stream but a, a challenge back in your direction all right so similar to what we did with our npcs i want to make maybe two villain at least two villains tonight and I want to I want to get ideas or uh, ideas for villains. Partially, or at least one of the villains could be partially based on the aspects that we can pull from our player characters, right? So that there's an investment uh, from the PCs in our villain to continue to pursue them. However, a villain does offer a very unique opportunity. In that a villain can be completely unknown and have the advantage of being immediately relevant to the story. Maybe not at the start. Um, you know, folks may not uh, realize that someone is a villain until, you know, the scheme sets in motion or until the villain misses up or, you know, there's all kinds of prompts. So we, I, I'm not feeling compelled that the villain has to personally uh impact every one of the pcs golden uh do you make a big bad first or second come up with ideas honestly we could probably make five different villainous concepts from our from our character sheets and from the uh the city the region that we developed as well and you could sit back as a DM and say, well, now I have a list. I like all of these concepts. Which one of them do I want to tap as my big bad evil guy? My BBEG. Uh, to make a truly despicable one? That can be compelling. Just uh, remember, Rhodey, um, depending on the villain's actions he or she still needs to, you know, why would someone want to work with this villain to take over a region or to take over the world or to control uh, an order or an economy or something along those lines? Um, so you can make a truly despicable person, but how is a despicable person going to be able to meet his or her goals if they don't really interact well with other people? They could be singularly powerful. That that could be a reason. Um, it's a lot of work for one person, though, even who's singularly powerful. One man's villain's another man's saint, says Azrael. Well, and you know, um, oh, there was a quote, I think, about that. Um, it's about the, the more you know about a villain, the more you understand that they're not truly bad or I, I forget exactly how that goes right 
it's easy to hate the necromancer looking to bring back the you know to raising raising the dead uh you know who have been long at rest and and, and you know you're like oh that that lich necromancer's got to go right there's detachment there's mystery there's things that are seemingly violating an obvious taboo uh such as desecrating a grave by um by raising up the physical remains of grandpa and grandma and you know and putting them under his own control without asking or hers um but the more you learn of your villain the more your pcs might identify or even find it difficult to speak with the same level of righteous indignation or to you know impugn that person's character as they realize why is this person doing it is it because it's lol random you know they 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 bring their penguin army and use a spork as a wand in order to raise the undead uh you know you know do we have a lol random person or do, is this person acting with rationality does this person understand what he or she is actually doing and is willing to accept those consequences uh, because the juice is worth the squeeze apparently yeah uh, a good villain is, a, is the hero's own tale like it, it's difficult you can have people who wake up in the morning look in the mirror and say i'm crazy i'm a bad guy that can that can occur i think you'll find more often than not a, a villain of a story isn't going to wake up in the morning and say you know what i'm a bad guy i haven't kicked a puppy or burned down an orphanage in a while and frankly i have a quota to meet so let's get cracking I'm, I'm glad you like the presentation bro plier hey viking good to see you every villain has their belief system that makes perfect sense to them yep you're right yeah a lot of villains a lot of compelling villains even make that plea to the pcs join me you understand what needs to be done i'm the only one willing to do this and what are you doing you're trying to stop me what have you done to improve the world you may not like the fact that I have to that I have to scrape, that I have to raise people out of graveyards without their consent. You know why? Because people aren't willing to step up in the world and to save it from itself or to save it from whatever, right? Whatever the, the compelling motivation for the villain is. And because none of the, you know, where were you when I was searching for people like you? Before I had to resort to this. And look at what it's done. Look at the good it has done the world. I'm not asking for your thanks, but you can sure as heck as H-E double hockey sticks. Ooh. It's a serious villain. You sure as heck can stay out of my way if you're not going to help me. Compelling villain? One that even one of the player characters or several might even feel sympathy for that character or empathy for that character. Ooh. Empathy for the villain. <clears throat> hey, 12 for 10. Now I'll get you next time, He Man. Yeah. Yeah, writing a compelling villain can be difficult, Rody. Um, and, and you need to determine that cause. Um, I mean, it could be simple. It could be a very straightforward goal. And it's just that this person has the gumption to pursue it. Where others, you know, dalliance through polite society or etiquette or, you know, they're willing to do it, but they don't have the knowledge or the resources to really hop aboard. Yeah, there you go, bro. Player people won't step up in this world, but my zombies will. Okay, yeah, new Monica. Hey, yep. <laughs> so let's see if we can find some inspiration 
from the content we've already produced. Look, let's be lazy DMs, everyone. All right. Being a dungeon master, plotting out uh, an idea for a game, um, you know, trying to make a world operate around your PCs doesn't have to be difficult. We can be lazy DMs. We can extract so much information from the things that we've already made. Uh, Viking says, I think Christoph Waltz said it best when he said, quote, if you don't have a villain, the good guy can stay home. And in fact, you know, Viking on that, um, I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll be showing a little bit of ankle by, by going ahead here. Villains this is on page 93, boys, and uh, 94. If you open your, your dungeon master guides, come on now. I know you brought your books, right? Diadems just in time too, huh? By their actions, villains provide job security for heroes. But of course, you know, there's a lot more detail to it. Uh, but I, I don't want to get too far ahead. We have our villain worksheet, right? Uh, but before we get to that, I want to make sure that uh, let's pull elements to consider from the content we've already generated. Because it'll be an organic extension of it, and it'll make a lot more sense and maybe pull on the heartstrings of the players, let alone their characters, in a game if there's a relatability to a villain or a villainous concept. All right, so can we find any villain inspiration from Sooty? All right, a paladin of devotion, guild artisan, a woodworker, boyer, or a cooper. Um, I'm full of witty aphorisms, and I have a proverb for every occasion. I'm well known for my work, and I want to make sure everyone appreciates it. I'm always taken aback when people haven't heard of me. I'm committed to the people I care about, not to ideals, and that's her ideal, is ideals. I pursue wealth to secure someone's love. That was an NPC inspiration. But I think we might be able to get an element of villainy from her flaw. I'm horribly jealous of anyone who can outshine my handiwork. Everywhere I go, I'm surrounded by rivals. Now, rivals can be NPCs. Rivals don't have to be, you know, purely antagonistic. A rival doesn't necessarily have to undermine the hero at every opportunity and seek blood and, 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 the, and the like. Azrael, to quote Weird Al, I know Darth Vader's really got you annoyed, but remember if you kill him, then you'll be unemployed. Is it, uh, I'm not showing any drop frames, bro, plier. Uh, are there stutters going on or are the rest of you getting some kind of a stutter? New Monica, well, there is such a thing as a natural disaster. It isn't really a villain, but if you pass judgment on the hurricane, it can be just as villainous and natural disaster can be pretty bizarre in a fantasy world. That's true. It could just be um, a cold, inanimate, ticking time bomb of some of some uh, degree. Not all campaigns need a big, bad, evil guy. Um, they can have something like what New Monica just talked about. You know, a prophecy coming uh, to fruition. A plague uh, that, you know, is rumored to be heading this way towards the kingdom. And those can make compelling villains also because you you can't negotiate with a hurricane, right? It, it's a force. How do you, how are, what's your plan on dealing with that force? You know, it is, it is cruel. It doesn't care if it blows down a, a house on a baby um, or, or it blows down the jail on people that, you know, society probably wouldn't miss. Uh, you know, if it's like some, you know, super bad place. Um, you know, it strikes young and old, rich and poor. They're all going to suffer equally. 
And so you, if you have a force as a villain, um, it, it's its whole other consideration. Very occasional. Well, hopefully there's not a lot of delay. Um, and, and, you know, you're, you're, you're getting me live. I'm not sure I'm dropping frames. So I wonder if it's not, um, maybe it's a Twitch issue. Yeah. Yeah, rats in their plague. How do you fight swarms of rats that are, are prevalent everywhere? The rats are the villains, everyone. Solid on the audio. Well, I guess that's the that's the major part, right? That's the at least a 60-40 split between what I what I hope the audio is conveying as opposed to the video. Five seconds of delay, so that's not too bad. All right, so Sooty through her flaw. Um, could we could generate a villain around a rival of hers? Um, or, and and you know it might be fair it not just to say a villain but a possible threat. Um, a threat could be uh, someone who. Right, she's a woodworker. Some someone or something. That limits her access to wood. You know, a uh, uh, pl locust plague eats up all the trees or something, right? Um, or something. The someone disables the sawmill. That's going to put a hamper in things for her. All right, so now we have Polanka. Now she's a vengeance paladin. She she's seeking vengeance on someone in particular. Uh, let's see. I blew up at the slightest insult. I'm incredibly slow to trust. I don't steal from others of the trade. My ill-gotten gains go to support my family, and I'm guilty of a terrible crime. I hope I can redeem myself for it. So here we have, um, also from the flaw. Someone who gave her bad advice or set her up to commit the terrible crime about which she feels tremendous grief. Duggan. I've enjoyed fine food and drink. I can find an, a common ground between the fiercest of enemies. So through the uh, personality two, a lingering enemy from a failed or unfavorable negotiation. Uh, charity, try to help those in need. I'll do anything to protect the temple where I served. I'm suspicious of strangers and expect the worst of them. So we can go to a threat, right? What's an external threat that would, uh, that would be a good villain for Duggan? Um, corruption within the, whoop, the holy order. Right, he everything he does, he's doing for uh, for his faith, for his church. And if he were to learn that maybe one of the 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 brothers of the order is a villain, 
would be crushing. It would hurt. Hey, Gaming Zeta, great to see you. Ezra says, Pharisees in the temple. Oh, stretch. No, uh, gaming, it's fine. Um, I, you know, I know you've been broadcasting, and I know you're still working on your Legend of Zelda um, supplement to 5th Ed. Um, I'm, hey, if you're working, you know, make that money, take care of what you got to take care of, and uh, enjoy your own games and streams. You know, we'll always be around. If you can stop in, you know you're always welcome. You have a seat at our table. Law might have a very obvious prompt here. Um, a powerful person killed someone I love. Ooh, pardon. And for our final character, uh, let's see. My favorite one's Lost, Lost Forever. Eloquent flattery makes everyone I talk to feel most wonderful. Uh, respect. Nothing's more important than the members of my family. And I secretly believe everyone's beneath me. Hmm. A villainous concept that we could extrapolate from her. That's true, Azrael. It could be um it could be a, a corrupt noble. But if they make the villain too likable, what do you mean, Golden? I'm sorry if I if I missed something. All right, now we can take a look see at what's the region we've established. Can we pull a villain? What kind of a villain would grow up here or want to come here in order to fulfill their plan? And now we said that uh, this river fairy would probably be a better NPC. I mean, could he be a villain? I don't see why not. I think from, from the current calamity of a new cult seeks converts. You know, there's this hidden shrine to a fiend or an evil deity. I think from our... Uh, from... Uh, we can go with a cult leader as a concept and then can we can we somehow i mean do we want to to bond them in all together or just make a uh like charan's cousin oh gotcha golden okay i understand yeah uh gaming uh one region's culture 
can very well produce a hero to those people. You know, where their thoughts and deeds are, uh, uh, um, they're acceptable. They're, in fact, they're exceptional. This person is a paragon of that society. But of course, when you leave the kingdom, suddenly, you know, being the best cannibal, just, su you know, it can leave a bad taste in one's mouth. Because the rest of society outside of whatever cannibalistic uh, pocket society was there you know, tends to frown on that activity. And so you're a, you're a mass murderer. You're, you're a cannibal. You eat people. So I, I think the obvious, the, the low hanging fruit here is going to be making a cult leader. For this new cult that's seeking recruits in town to try and get people to step away from um, religion and divinity. Oh, pardon me. Okay, so on page 74, let's determine our adventure villain with a d20 roll. We rolled an 11. That means we have a humanoid, a humanoid conqueror that works out so far. Sorry, I gotta scroll down to uh, the objective or the scheme. All these pages, by the way, are really good. Okay, here we go. Let's roll a D8. We rolled a 7. Revenge. And specifically on the topic of revenge, let's roll a D4. Oops. Um, all right, so th there was a, a bit of a, a delay there. So our first D4 roll was a 3, and we're going to stick with that. If we can recycle that other uh, D4 roll for something, I guess we'll, we'll look into that as well. Uh, so, number three, under revenge, avenge the death of a loved one. The method our villain takes, we rolled a five. Confidence scams, and there's a D6 involved with another five. Fraud or swindling. 
All right, bro player. Hey, I'll, catch me on uh, Discord or whatnot. You know, we'll talk about what you're looking for. Be well, bro player. Stretch. Aha, the villain now has a weakness. Let's roll a d8. We rolled eight. The villain loses its power if a mystic bargain it struck long ago is completed. Now, are the PCs going to know this initially? No. And that's fine. Um, that's something to discover. It's something to help enjoy the, that, the process of going on an adventure. Now, from here, we are uh, we're guided back into the NPC creation. Is it? I wonder if my computer is like going through a virus check or something. Because I, I, I am getting that stuttering, right? There's things that I'm clicking on. <sighs> really, computer? What's going on? What's going on? Technical issues, right? If it wasn't the internet going out for, uh... <sighs> All right, I think we're back. Hopefully we're back. Sorry if it has been pausing or it's been something, whatever's going on. It's not just me. All right. Yeah, it could be on, on Twitch's end. But it's been happening over the last four days. I, I know that um, Awesome Games Done Quick is going, and that pulls in a lot of eyeballs as well. Uh, so it could be server balancing or load issues because of a big event like that. Gotcha. All right, so we're, we're guided now into the NPC creation. Because look, it's the, a villain is an NPC, just an extra special, an extra spicy kind. So occupation or history, if we want this, this one um, leads a cult of self-dependency. Then we can we can put that in there, um, you know. Who was this man or woman before they started leading this cult? What led to that revelation? Uh, a suggestion I can make to you all: roll a thirteen-sided die and choose a background. Um, you know, uh, if if that is their current class or their current objective, we can even do that right now. Let's roll a thirteen-sided die. We rolled a twelve. So that is the second to last. So Urchin is last, and right before that is a soldier. Okay? 
Well, hey, it was someone to lead a cult of self-dependency. Um, former soldier, and specifically an officer. Um, came to rely oh, to rely on his doubts and own skills as a way to control and survive. And so here we have then a former soldier who has taken upon himself through his training, through you know maybe experienced something very dramatic that happened on the battlefield, and something just clicked up in his mind. And that's what led him on his on this path to be a a cult leader. One major appearance, you know, it's something that distinguishes him. Let's roll a d20. 18. Distinctive posture, crooked or rigid. Ooh. Odds or evens. We rolled evens, so it's going to be rigid. Well, he is a former soldier, an officer. He holds himself, you know, to arms and, you know, arms are straight or at certain angles. You know, feet are shoulder length apart. He carries himself in a regimented uh, style. Well, thank you for that sentiment, Rody. The abilities. Now, you might say, well, charisma should be high, right? He leads a cult. I'm not going to argue charisma should be high. Will it be the highest? I don't know. You can have a strong strength. You know, your your best skill is strength. But your, your charisma is second, fourth, fifth. Anyway, let's roll 2d6. Five and two. High wisdom, low dexterity. Hmm. Could be a cleric, uh, a cleric of his own. Or he's still a soldier. He's very keen on battlefield awareness and reading opponents. Um, but he just, I don't know, maybe there's an injury that's keeping him from being too mobile. You know, he has, uh, you know, his posture might slow him down a little bit and might ex help explain his low dex. The cult of self-dependency sounds like a strong arm job to me. How so, Ezreal? His talent is number seven. Great at solving puzzles. There we go. Hey, and you know what? We're going to make a dungeon. It might be interesting to have a race through the dungeon with the big bad evil guy. Yeah, could be something along those lines, Rody. I, I wouldn't mind doing that. That was the talent. Oh, mannerisms. That's right. D20. Rolled a two. Speaks in rhyme or some other peculiar way. How would you like uh, this villain to speak? What would be peculiar about his or her cadence, volume, vocabulary choice? Well, possibly. Sometimes your top, uh, you know, your your 
a top dog because you can just rally people to you. You're you're just that good. How does he interact with others? Let's roll a d12. Suspicious. What's he hiding, even from his followers? Useful knowledge. Well, we're going to have to fill that in. Now, being the villain, I mean, he's going to know all of the relevant bad guy stuff, right? The the timetable for his plot, the, you know, the names of the his other big generals you're going to have to fight, the doomsday machine or whatever. He's going to have a lot of info. I, I think we're going to skip that for right now. I mean, fleshing it out. His ideal, we're going to roll 2d6. One, two, three, four, five. It's a neutral ideal. The neutral ideal of people. Fading February, welcome. His speaking mannerism could be something related to his past as a soldier, military jargon of some kind. Yeah. Um, so, uses military uh uses military jargon and speaks assertively even when not necessary hey doomfish thank you for uh, thank you very much for that raid you might be uh, caught in ad purgatory here so we'll, we'll give you a little bit to load in His bond. Let's roll a ten-sided die. Five. Captivated. Uh, oh, there we are. I was looking at the wrong at the wrong column. There we go. Captivated by a romantic interest. Ooh. Could the villain be taking a romantic interest in, an, in another NPC? Or would the villain, this whole time, having been trying to court one of the PCs and none of them had put the, the clues together to realize until it was too late. Well, hopefully not too late. But until it was too late that the whole time the villain had been there and even trying to date <laughs> one of your one of your characters. Only slightly trapped in purgatory. Well, welcome to you, and thank you very much for that raid, Doomfish. And lastly, what is what is his or her flaw or secret? D12. Uh, seven has a powerful enemy. Hmm. You know. So as as a villain concept, again, let's be lazy DMs. Let's look at the stuff that we've already made. Let's connect the dots. It sounds like It's, it seems like Bernal might be an excellent enemy to the big bad evil guy. Hmm. I love it when numbers really challenge you like this. You know, how do we, how do we, how do we make it work? Because it can. And I think that we might have our way forward with that. Yes, Ezreal. Um, she uses a, a, a crowbar or a pry bar uh, to as a, a like a weapon and a tool. It's very dear to her.
Now we can go through, and with the monster manual, we can we can uh, say that uh, you know he's uh, oh, not an arcane trickster. I mean that 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 could work as well. Um, you know, an Eldritch Knight, a Blade Warlock. There's a lot of things that we can go through now and start filling in the details. Oh, for the enemy making it uh, uh, Polanka, because this is the person who... Um, sorry, as I said at the beginning of the stream, I'm going off of four hours of sleep that was broken up into two two-hour naps with four hours themselves in between them. Someone who gave her bad advice in order to help cover up for a terrible crime for which she feels tremendous grief. Mm -hmm, that could work. Um... Lom could be an attachment to this villain as well. Heck, we could even say that this villain is a third suitor for the other NPC we created, the noble, who has others, uh, you know, so he has ambition. He's he's looking to be used. And what, what great, um, what a great position it would be for a cult leader to be able to indoctrinate, you know, this up and coming heir to one of the noble houses. That could be an interesting uh, connection as well to another NPC. And then of course that NPC to the to you know the PCs in their own uh, in their own vicarious ways. No, I understand Azrael. Uh, I I very much do. So with this now, I mean, if we wanted to, we could stat out this villain. We could find, uh, we can find a monster in the monster uh, manual, and reskin it. In fact, you want to know. You want to know who make really good, awesome human wizards, beholders. They make a pretty good magic user, elven or goblin or whatever. Just crack open one of these, reflavor it, and there you go. You have your villain. Fading February, thank you very much for that follow. I appreciate that. Welcome aboard. And, uh, well, unfortunately, I feel like I'm fading uh, just because it's uh, of the, uh, you know, it's the end of the day and I'm, I'm very comfortable I mean, especially broadcasting with you all. You're such a comfy crew. Um, I, I get that fading feeling as well. Okay. Here we go. Um, we... Now... This villain is a little different because it is directly made more custom to who we know as a DM we want as a villain. We understand this villain more. If we wanted to take this as a concept and make more of a um, a blank... Uh, for example, we're going to make a dungeon tomorrow. Who runs this dungeon? What what goes on? We don't know uh, that it, it, that it is a. I mean, it, it could be a cult leader. It could be something or someone else. But let's make one more together, and it, it can go pretty quickly. Uh, and I want to do this because I want to use this second villain as imagination uh, fertilizer for when we make the dungeon in which this villain or this end boss or whatever uh, will will be. And we could have some sort of a fight or a discussion, depending on the, the circumstances of the party around it. All right, so we come back up here. Adventure villains, let's roll a d20. We rolled a five. A giant bent on plunder. The objective Oh, 
Oh, come on. I know you're here. Where did I miss my objective and scheme? I could have sworn it was one, it was one, one of the, the top ones here. Moral quandaries. Event-based goals. Adventure climax. And by the way, we're going to be using the dungeon goals to help us make a dungeon. What's Craig Breakdo life and things up? Sure, Ezreal. Uh, which box would you like me to open? Monster Menagerie 1 or Dragon Heist? Sorry, here I am just sort of flopping around in here. There we are. That's what I was looking for. It's a little bit past where I needed it. Um, all right, D8. We rolled a two. Uh, the objective is influence. So that plunder is going to be going towards something influential. You want to go with Dragon Heist? Sure thing. And within influence, uh, we had a D4. I'm, I'm still floating that spare D4 roll from earlier. So let's not waste a die roll. I like keeping things whole like that. Uh, it was a one. All right, so this is going to catch us up in our dice roll. Seize a position of power or title. And this villain's methods are going to be D20. Rolled an 18 and then a D6. Five. Through torture, thumbscrews in particular. And the villain's weakness is one. A hidden object holds the villain's soul. Or an equivalent. I mean, it, it, this is a prompt. If you want it to be kind of like a lich or the like, go ahead. If you want to use this as a springboard, there you go. So, occupation or history. Um, so, yeah, maybe he's looking to be the head of the giant clan or the tribe, as Ezreal's saying. You know, what is this? What does he or she currently do? You can roll in backgrounds in the PHB. Uh, you can roll, uh, I don't know, there's a couple other things. I think in chapter five of the PHB that talks about equipment. And you can associate this character with a piece of equipment as a profession or just as what he or she is proficient with. Let's roll a 13-sided die and let's use the background approach. We rolled a 12, another, ooh, Another soldier. Villain versus villain. Interesting. And what kind of soldier? Let's roll a d8. Six. A quartermaster. Well, I think it's a weakness because of that, if it becomes uh, knowledge. Then the villain can be truly defeated. And that would be the villain's one true fear, right? Come back over here. Now let's go to the NPC chapter stuff above. What's a distinctive appearance? Eight. Missing fingers. How did this character lose a finger or fingers? All on, or toes, or a nose. 
or ears. How did our villain come to miss some parts? Abilities, high and low. Three and six. High con, low charisma. Those kind of sound like a... Uh, um, hey, maybe maybe a warlord. You know, I, I guess warlords might need charisma to, to rally people together. But, you know, here we have... Oh, strong survives. You tried to poison me. I just flexed that poison out. Hi, Daly. Welcome. Good to see you. All right, a talent this uh, villain has. Ten. Draws beautifully. How could we put that to use? I think we could find some ways. Especially in a dungeon uh, situation. Mannerisms. We rolled a 17. He paces. Or she. Interaction with others is a d12. We rolled a 2. Very arrogant. I definitely see this villain in the one that we made who's more the, the grand overarching villain. I can see them clashing. Useful knowledge. Well, it's going to have to uh, work with the, you know, the, the, the profession, right? This soldier has the ambition. Um... You know, is pursuing, um, is pursuing a title, a position of power, or a title. Ideal, 2d6. 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. People. He believes in people, right? In others. I do this for the people. You could argue Thanos was doing what he was doing for the people as well. Man, you know, I, I could accept that. Or he was caught selling army supplies on the black market and had to cut off his fingers. Ooh, yeah. Mm. I'll show that captain of mine. I'll become captain. You know, after getting reprimanded and... Um, His bond is a d10. We rolled 10. Roll twice, ignoring the results of 10. 3 and 3. Uh, so we have 3 and... I'm going to re-roll re that. 3 and 7. Protective of colleagues or compatriots and protective of a sentimental keepsake. Maybe that's where he keeps his soul. You know, as a soldier, you don't want to die, right? Maybe he keeps his soul in, a, in that trinket. So, protective of... A sentimental keepsake. And... Oh, colleagues or compatriots? And colleagues. Or if you want to put compatriots, his soldiers, something like that, that can work as well. And lastly, his flower is secret. Three. Arrogance also. Ooh. Well, that's his interaction. Very grating. So here's our prompt for kind of a mid boss, like right? a mini boss, and even one that can clash with our with our top boss. In fact, might even for a while seemingly um, put that boss down, assume control or something along those lines, until he is defeated or gets his goal or moves on. The PCs, I think the PCs have options. I mean, you can just kill this as a, as a villain, this person. Um, you might be able to help redirect them or even try to pull power from him in some way. 
I think there's a lot of possibility here. All right, so I, uh, Azrael, you picked up a dragon heist. Thank you so much. Uh, why don't we pop that? And um, I think we'll call it an evening. I'm I am just beleaguered. Again, four hours of sleep over two two-hour naps that are split four hours apart themselves. Um, uh, Azrael, I mean, I, I certainly appreciate the sponsorship. If you want to sponsor some boxes, it's definitely a good brain boost, you know, to, to get that uh, to get that nice, yeah, you know, to see what's in the box, what awaits. Um, but I don't feel like I'm going to be able to give you uh, some extra quality villainous concepts with me in this state. Um, and I would rather I would rather give you, uh, you know, a no show than a bad show. Just like it's better to not play a game than to play a bad game, in my opinion. You know, that's advice if you ever have to, you know, stop playing on a, a role playing game for a while or something. Right. You're just not feeling it. You're getting burnt out. You're it's it'll be far worse if you just stick with it. And if you say, you know what, everyone, I'm going to have to back off. <laughs> 